This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 7, Review Questions and Problems. You're going to play the video and pause when you see the question or the problem. You can do them mentally or write the answers. I will strongly suggest, though, especially those that have multiple parts or that are in chart form, you might want to write those answers down so that when you continue playing the video for the next slide, you can check your work against my answers. You should also have out that real periodic table and in your packet of notes, the periodic table that has those valence electrons and charges. Here, number one. Answer. Number two, again, here's that chart. And there is a reason why I put carbon down twice. So can you figure that out? Hopefully you paused, you used your real periodic table to find the elements, you used your valence electrons chart to come up with the other stuff. Hopefully you can came up, came up with symbol and charge and the name of the ion as well. Now before you pause and check your answers, again, for carbon, since carbon and those other elements are in group 14, 14 is midway between zero and eight valence electrons that you want um, in order to be stable. So carbon can either be a, or act like a metal, that's why he's in green here as carbon, having a positive four charge, or sometimes carbon acts more as a non-metal and his name is carbide, changes to carbide, when he has a negative four charge. So again, that group 14 elements, um, sometimes they act as a metal or a non-metal, but their name is gonna then justify or uh, be in relationship with um, what charge it's, what it is. Number three, and again, as a reminder, we just want to make sure we're remembering that it doesn't matter where these three pairs of electrons are and the one single, but that you have three pairs on three sides somewhere and a single electron or a single dot on one side for chlorine. Number four. Same thing here with aluminum, you need three single electrons. So it doesn't matter if it's the top three, the bottom three, as long as you have three single electrons on three sides of the aluminum symbol. Number five, answer. And I am trying to color coordinate, so most metal answers are most positive ions or most cations. I try to keep in green, and most of the time, same thing with your non-metals. I try to keep those in blue, whether I'm showing you gaining uh, electrons, I'm showing you a negative charge, I'm showing you the name. Um, so I'm trying to color coordinate that so it kind of gets better into your uh, brain, the green and the blue ver metal versus non-metal. Number six, again, here's that chart, so you might want to pause and jot these down so it's easier to check your answer. These are all metals, so I just um, wrote down how many electrons they lost, and I just kept it in the black coloring. Number seven. And same thing here, these are all metals, so I just uh, had them all <clears throat> stay in the black uh, lettering and uh, they're all positive. Number eight, these are your non-metals. And number nine, again, these are all non-metals, so they all, oh, I'm sorry, no, they're not. not most of them are non-metals, so again, the non-metals change to IDE, except for sodium's a metal. Number 10, hopefully you paused and actually wrote these down so it's easier to check your work here. And 10 continued. And again, for F and H is going to be really, really important next chapter. You're gonna have a better understanding as to why we did copper one versus copper two, um, depending on their charge, how many electrons they lose. Um, we're going to need those Roman numerals. So you'll have a better understanding uh, of this information in chapter nine. Number 11. 
answer. Hopefully that makes sense and you paused and read that over. 12, again, pause, and you might want to write these out to get a better understanding now. I did have here, though, yes or no. And so if you want to continue with the yes, coming up with the formula name, that's a great idea. However, for the no's, can you come up for a reason why? Why do that? does that pair of elements not make an ionic compound? What's so special about them? So hopefully you paused, you came up with the yes and no's. Hopefully you came up with, uh, if the answer is yes, that it makes an ionic compound, you came up with the formula and the name. And if you had a no, the why, why do they not make an ionic compound? So you might want to pause and read over this. Number 13. So remember that when we deal with compounds, I'm always dealing with a first part and a second part. So here is your first part, your second part, and the formula that would make that ionic compound. So again, hopefully you're pausing and writing these out so it's easier to check your work as well as, again, this is really important um, from now until the end of the course. Number 14, again, same thing. Can you go back and separate? If I give you a formula, can you grab those ions and then make the name of that compound? Hopefully you paused and wrote these out so it's a better, easier way of checking your answers. And again, most of the time I'm trying to keep your metals green and your non-metals blue uh, just so it gets a better understanding in your brain. Number 15. Here's your answers, read that over. 16, answers. 17, and answers. And we wanna remember the simplest formula, and this is why that letter B there, you wanna make sure that you're reducing that two and four can divide it by two evenly. So the two changes to one and the four changes to two. So it's really, really important to understand that you have to reduce when you can, but, but we have to remember that our Roman numerals come from the original charge of that metal. All right, guys, good luck on the test.